All right, we are live. And, uh, you know, we, we have another guest that's coming, but it looks like Mike <laughs> lost his camera. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't know why that happened. I didn't click anything. <laughs> That's all right. Um, Jay is going to show up a little bit late. That's totally okay. I know he's not um, in the U.S. time zone. He's doing some things, but he will be here any minute here. Um, but uh, you know, I kind of just wanted to talk before we do some introductions. I'm gonna wait for Jay uh, to get this going. But um, so, Mike, like. You know, we both were seeing this on Twitter all over the place where a lot of people were struggling with CSS. Um, and, you know, we wanted to provide our, our, our thoughts and our approach on how we construct uh, a design into code. Um, so you can, can you share a little bit more about, like, why you wanted to help out here? Yeah, for sure. Um, I also saw that, uh, I think specifically, Shashi, with the uh, incoming, like, 100 devs cohort, the, uh, my understanding is that you're working on implementing layouts using floats and stuff like that. Uh, that's something I think like n people who have learned CSS in the past like five years don't really know how to do. Uh, so I'm particularly interested, like I think it's like really good idea to kind of learn um, kind of the old school ways of doing things. So you can appreciate uh, Flexbox and Grid as 100%. much as we do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think like I, um, I've seen this like trend in the past where people are like, oh, I really hate CSS. I think like a lot of people who hate CSS tend to hate it because they, it's like kind of a mystery, right? Like, I think like they kind of know how to do things, but then when something goes wrong, um, it, it becomes like this, like, uh, mysterious black box that they're trying to like dig into. They don't really know what's going on. Um, so I, yeah, would love to kind of like make, you know, be here with Shashi, demystify it with you, um, and figure out, uh, if there's anything that we can do to make your CSS journey a little bit easier. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Mike. Like when I heard that, um, a lot of the 100 devs are doing in floats, I was like, oh, that's very interesting. But I totally understand, uh, why Leon's doing this. And I, I just, we, I think we just want to preface this, like we're, we're not trying to, um, like, we're just trying to add value here. We're just trying to like show, like just display what we as experienced engineers are go through, um, how we process this information. Because um, I think we both know that when we were first beginning, it is very difficult to navigate through uh, taking a design and actually like building it out. You know, there like there are so many tools and tricks that we've learned across our journey that could potentially help you um understand like what you're why you're doing what you're doing um how can you build something quicker more efficient right i think that's the biggest thing that is on my mind is efficiency um there's some tools that can help as well um but uh, yeah i um yeah so I, I don't know where jay is but yeah i think it's also like one other thing that's really important to know is that there are so many different ways of implementing a css uh layout and many of them are like objectively bad <laughs> um, and you don't really know even like what's bad or good when you're first starting out you're just trying to get something working and i think this is true throughout all programming but especially css because you can really make something look exactly like the design but it falls apart when you like add more text to it or like when you resize the browser or something like that and so these are things that uh, you'll kind of learn with experience, but if someone can, you know, kind of teach you what to look out for, I think it really helps uh, kind of accelerate your learning. Yeah, so uh, let me bring up the kind of example we're gonna show. Um, I know this is from, uh, I was contacting one of the uh, cohort members and just kind of get a gauge of what, what's going on. Um, and so we kind of wanted to play, play in of uh, like what you guys are going through. But not, like you don't even have to be a part of Wonder Devs to kind of get some value from here. You know, any layout that you see, any layout that you're going to work with, it's you know the ideas are always going to be there. There's always going to be something. So let me pull this up for us. Oh, actually, here we go. Here we go. I'm here. He's here. Hey, Jay. How's it going? Good. 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 How you doing, man? Better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome no yeah it's great to, to have both of you here uh so now that both of you are here let me go through uh, my introductions and everything um so i'm shashi i'm just a senior ui engineer um 
I'm really a nobody. But uh, I just wanted to really help out um, by providing my experience and the things that I've learned along the way to help all like aspiring developers, junior developers, um, hoping that uh, the, the, the knowledge that I have can you know help change uh, the way that you think and, and, and help you be more efficient as well. Um, and then I, since, <laughs> since last I introduced somebody, Mike was like, well, I can't, how come you didn't give me an epic intro? All right, Mike, I got you. All right, so we've got this guy. He's amazing at live coding. He is a, an assassin coder. Like he, he, every Friday on Front End Evil, he goes on and creates these amazing solutions that will probably take me four hours, but he does it in like 30 minutes. And we have here, Mike Chan. Thank you, Shashi. Uh, appreciate it. Can you hear me still, by the way? Yep. Okay, great. Um, yes, so uh, yeah, I, I have my own stream. I, I do uh, front end interview questions on it. Um, and that's, yeah, that's so, like, I think I'm, I'm best at uh, kind of the JavaScript React side of things. But I'm, I can hold my own at CSS, so that's what I'm doing here. Um, I've been in the industry for about 12 years, and I uh, am currently a CTO and co-founder of a pretty small startup uh, based in Virginia. Um, so yeah, and I run I run a stream uh, for mock interviews, and I uh, run a site called frontendeval.com uh, where you can find interview questions um, for practicing uh, for frontend interviews. So that's me. Thanks for coming on, Mike. And then next we have Jay, uh, but there's only one way I can introduce Jay. Okay, we gotta wait here, hold on. Just as, yeah, it's just me, done. Hold on. <laughs> that's a good, that's good. That's good shit. All right. Oh, we got, well, I haven't uh, got my shades. <laughs> special, special guest speaker here. Uh, CSS Wizard, if you haven't uh, gone to see his work, he does tutorials, he does courses. He does some amazing work with CSS, some magic that I can't even explain. We have the amazing Jay. Poor. It was worth every penny to get that intro. <laughs> Charge well, me an absolute bucket load. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe is right. We need um we need like an air horn, like a bip, 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 bip. <laughs> I have one. Oh, oh hit it. But I can't, I don't have a setup to play on this camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unfortunately. Uh, let me see. You might you might be able to put it on your. Oh, let's do it. Mm, 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 mm. How's everyone doing anyway? How's your Monday? Oh man, it's it's Monday. You know, Mondays are always a little bit rough. Really? So... <laughs> For me, it is at least. <laughs> I love Monday. What the heck? <laughs> this is exactly why we have all three of us because yeah. we have different perspectives, different perspectives and different you know ways of thinking and that's perfect because I just want to preface to our audience too that you know this is why we're doing what we're doing and I have variety here because the way I think might not resonate with you, Jay might resonate more with you or Mike. And that's why, you know, we wanted to go through this. But um, I, you know, I asked Mike already, Jay, like, uh, like what, uh, why he was here. And I want to ask you too, you know, like we, we, we saw the feed of on Twitter, like all these people struggling with CSS and, you know, you commented as well and say, Hey, you know, I want to do something like this. Let's do this together. And mm -hmm. like, to be frank, like this, is the first time we're meeting, you know, <laughs> which is pretty cool. We're just hanging out, talking about CSS. A common interest. Oh. <laughs> sure so you want me to what do you want me to say why i reached out yeah 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 like um... well yeah it's just it's one of them um i i like the i don't know too much about the 100 dev swing but i see it obviously popping up a lot and um i just think it's kind of like this this works both ways right so it kind of shows that these kind of problems um they do get easier but they they're always tricky so it's like relatable. And um, I think this, like the, the whole learning by actually solving something is the best way to do it instead of um, plowing through like all of the properties. So when I was designing a CSS course, um, which is t a TBC, <laughs> maybe I'll make it in like 2030 something. <laughs> um, but the idea was not to do 
like I'm not just going to regurgitate all the properties. It's like, I think about my own career. Where did I start? I, I made loading spinners. That was the first thing I started doing. And then I went from there and it was like, oh, I make a header. And there, like, that's the realistic way you learn for, for me, like practically doing it. Um, and this is why this is quite, a, this is a great example. Um, it's why I said about the, um, the dribble shots as well. Like that mm -hmm. was the most high pen of last year. And it's great because it's practical for people and they can see how a layout was like made. Um, yeah, it's a great way to do it. I don't know if that really answers what you're after. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. does. It does. Um, and that leads me to my next point um, was that, uh, you know, I, I did get a sponsor for this because I work with front end mentor and I've done a lot of their challenges and I felt like this tied in super well with what we're talking about, taking a design and putting it into code, right? Because you get specs, you have designs, all this stuff. And this is the challenge as a front end developer is you're going to receive a design and you're going to bring that thing to life, right? Using the tools you have, um, bringing that to life and, and thinking about web accessibility, responsive, that there's so many other things to think about. But today, we just want to keep it plain and simple um, to kind of gauge it towards the 100 devs. But also another thing is I did post up a tweet. Uh, Front End Mentor is going to give away one pro uh, 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 subscription for a whole year to somebody that likes, retweets, and uh, follows them. So at the end of this stream, I'm going to pull up that little you know randomizer and choose somebody uh, to receive this subscription. I was gonna say as well, just bouncing on something you just said there a moment ago, that uh, design dev like communication bridge is like an, an age old, not battle, but like <laughs> it's an ongoing challenge that just, oh, yeah. just doesn't get easier. Um, <laughs> there are tools, but yeah. So don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. everyone struggles with I mean, that. I definitely wanna talk about that a little bit too, because like throughout my career at the beginning, though, it was such a battle, right? You're like going head to head, like, you know, it's my way. No, it's your way. It's just like, oh my gosh, like, how do we work together? Like you well, have to learn like, how to bridge that. It's even just when the communication just misses things out, right? So oh. like you just mentioned it, responsive. Like there never used to be good tools. Like if you just received, I don't know, a bunch of PDFs and it's like, there you go, make <laughs> it. And it's like, what? <laughs> what is it like on phone, you know? So... <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, I think this is still something a lot of designers miss. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, what I, I think they're, you know, like a lot of designers still do like just one mobile and one desktop. And like sometimes there's like a lot of intermediate states that still look kind of dicey. And developers often are left to kind of infer what those look like, which I think like some developers can do pretty well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's always going to be those gaps. That, That's where it's um, interesting because I guess. That's where it's, if you're a more front end dev, then it's good to like just read a couple of design books. So you've got mm -hmm. that chops to kind of have the confidence to go, do you know what? I'll do it like that and we'll see what they say. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so you're not being blocked or something. Yeah, I totally agree. I think like I, I've, I've, I've known, I don't think it's a hard necessity. I've known a lot of front end developers that are terrible at design. Um, but I think it's really, really, really helpful to know yeah. the fundamentals, like alignment, totally. consistency, um, they are like hierarchy, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to like generate your own designs, but you can, yeah, like, I think you'll, you'll certainly get a ton of value out of like learning the basics and like being able to infer what the designer's vision was. I yeah, got yeah. into, um, I was just gonna say like, I got into design only like a few years back, like visual design and the book that changed it for me was, um, refactoring UI. Mm, yeah like that is invaluable it's so good just read a few I pages just, and yeah I, got read, I gotta read that book. but yeah mike you brought up a great point it's like being a front-end developer you do not need to be a, a fantastic designer like no way like there there's no way like you you know you can't do both it's so difficult um but to understand it will help tremendously um, I've just been blessed to work with many, many picky designers where they're so particular that it made me better, right? Like it drove me to be like, oh, I'm going to be meticulous with the implementations that I have now. Because when I first came out, oh man, trust me, it was like <laughs> all over the place. It's like, why is this two pixels off? Like what? How could you even see those two pixels? Like I can't even tell the difference. 
but it's their, you know, it's their baby. It's like they're, they've done so much work with it. They want to see it as closely to what they design as possible. And you're right, Jay, like sometimes they'll miss some functionality and that's where we have to cover the gaps. Like what's the interaction here? What's the animation here, right? How's this gonna transition? And so those are the things that uh, we definitely have to go through. Yeah, I think like other things of, of like, just I think there's all like this common trope of developers like blindly implementing whatever designers do, even if like what the designer made a mistake. So I think a very common one is if the designer like made something 18 pixels or like, sorry, 19 pixels or something like that, or 17, some random pixel amount. And the developer like codes that into the design or into the, into the code. Um, and without like questioning whether that, that margin fit into like the design system or something like that. So I think like having knowledge of like how design systems are supposed to work uh, also makes you a better developer. Like being able to catch uh, someone else's mistakes is really, really helpful. Um, and, you know, I, like it's not to say that your designer will make, actually they will make mistakes. <laughs> but it's really important to, to be able to, to know when they, when they do make a mistake, you know? I, I totally agree with that. Like I uh, had a designer, uh, they have a design system. We built the component library and they were off by two pixels. And I pointed out, I said, hey, um, did you want this at 16 or 14? And they're like, oh, 16. I was like, well, I was going to develop at 16, but luckily, you know, I caught it because I'm not going to go in and recreate something that's a little bit off, like a modifier, right? But, but you know, like sometimes we just need to like uh, help each other out and, and double check that. And like what Jay's been preaching so time is bridging that gap, right? Like bridging that gap from development to design is a huge thing to do. And I feel like it's... um. It's it's kind of a role that's not very apparent, but it is needed because many companies that I've been to, they kind of um, push it to the side until it becomes an issue. Then like, oh, how come our app is not consistent? And it's like, well, because <laughs> you didn't put the, um, uh, you know, you didn't put a high priority on this when you should have. And once you do, then you can start seeing this app or this website, like just come together it's so much easier. There are some, um, I mean, tooling has got a lot better. Like we were slamming it, but it has got a lot better for things. <laughs> like um, the one that springs to mind for me um, is probably like chromatic, I think is really good um, for that kind of thing. So if you don't know what chromatic is, um, I didn't until I spoke to Don once, but it's the like parent of storybook and you can do like collaborative reviews and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. um, that's really good like that's kind of a good way to bridge it but yeah it's like the one day someone will come up with the perfect collaboration tool <laughs> yeah, and we'll I all be long gone <laughs> for, for the, yeah, that's <laughs> i felt like for the longest time that like design tools are like on a two-year life cycle it's just like build up the hype and then by the time you've learned it it's the next design tool. it's like i think it's even worse than like js frameworks um, like it was sketch for a while and now it's Figma. And then I don't know, now it's this like chromatic thing that you're talking about. Uh, but I would love to like work with a design tool that understands the box model. Like that's, that's something oh. that I've just that's never good. understood why like design tools don't do that. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> what <laughs> <of that>? Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So I wanted to dive in so that we can get um, our our kind of ideas and our approach on the solution that um, some of the uh, 100 devs have been working on. Uh, so let's see here. This is my first time doing this, and I'm going to try to figure this out. Boom. All right. We're hoping that uh, I'm going to channel this CSS t-shirt that's going to save us. Oh, nice. <laughs> where, where, where can I get that t-shirt, Jay? Um, you want to go to Keyframers store. Ooh. I will find a link for you. <laughs> <I'll see>. um. <laughs> so looking at this uh, design, right? This is the BBC website. This is just a screenshot. Um, this is not an art file or anything. So it's very static. And th that's the challenge alone, right? Is that you don't have the art file. You don't know like what size these fonts are. You know, you don't know the spacing here and there. Um, but that's the challenge is to to try to build this without that, because like Michael was uh, saying earlier is, <clears throat> you know, using floats are good, but you also have to do that. So you understand why Flexbox and Grid were, was created and so that you can appreciate these tools. 
um, because this is actually how, I don't know about you guys, this is actually how I was handed designs before. And I had to go into Photoshop and measure each item and you know, get the spacing properly. Um, so, you know, any of you guys, like, I want to hear like your approach, right? Like, what are you, what are you looking at right now? What do you see? Um, and, and what potentially could, uh, help us out? It's funny. Cause, uh, I was just going to say, we had that conversation earlier and you were like, oh, it's done with floats. And I was like, what? And we both said like, we haven't used floats for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, is, like. this so, is the first time I write clear, uh, colon both in like the past like eight years and you'll be questioning whether you did it right because yes, exactly <laughs> i did. don't remember how to do it <laughs> that is the challenge alone too <laughs> um oh wow no flex box no classes and ids that's the other thing wait what I'm put in chat no classes or ids yeah how <laughs> it's gonna be descendant selectors wow all over the place yes <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna do our best <laughs> um and try to get as much as we can you but, can use classes um, okay oh, you can oh okay good okay, okay. that's yeah. that's an overwhelming w yes, yes classes are allowed <laughs> <laughs> i mean we can that's like god mode difficult for a real challenge <laughs> can we talk real quick about this uh lower right news story why was this national news at some point <laughs> Anyway, sorry to derail the conversation. I was just like very drawn to that. So picture. that's the only thing you saw out of this whole design, right? What? What? Okay. No, what, what are? Um, do they give it? Do they give us the assets, or we just use placeholders? Uh, just placeholders. Yep. This is it. This is all I got. Nope. <laughs> it's all right. When I saw this image, I it was immediately drawn to the uh, hairstyle too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I guess like I can I can talk through my my thought process first. Yes. I'm assuming we're not using semantic HTML either. Like this is like truly like dark ages web. Yeah, um, I would say you know let's go as basic as possible, uh, not too high level. Like you know this simple enough for a, a beginner to understand. Yeah, um, nothing too ridiculous. I mean you can also talk about the trade offs here. Right? Like like if you weren't using floats, like if you were going to use Flexbox, like what do you do? But um, I think overall, just our approach, right? Like how would we tackle this uh, design? Oh, we do use semantic HTML. Okay, great. That's yeah, good to know. That would be ideal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like HTML four days, um, but but I will... Uh, I'll keep it to in to an hour it. later where Mike's just done the whole thing with tables and <laughs> <laughs> spacer, oh, spacer yeah. gifts. <laughs> well, well, table would be perfect for this. Design. And then yes. we can sell it as if it's like a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> and around we go again. <laughs> baddies writing bad code. I like it. We're all, we're all baddies writing bad code. It's oh, just yeah. like different levels of bad. Um, but we're trying to get it as late, as little bad as possible. Okay, so um, just thinking through like the header, um, just start with the header. It's going to be a header element, uh, and inside we have like a link to BBC. Um, and then I'm just trying to think how I would size the top area without flexbox. Like I'm, this is like a totally different paradigm shift for me. Mm -hmm. I think it would need to be like percentage based widths, um, and that can then collapse into like a hamburger element uh, at some point. Um, so I'm thinking like the sign in button would be like a fixed, uh, fixed ish width, like probably the biggest percentage. And then all these other ones, um, uh, like home news sports, you know, that they would all be, um, like a smaller percentage and then more would be like a larger percentage. So I'm thinking like percentage based widths for like all these different elements. Um, and, and then they, they would all like collapse along with the resizing the browser until, uh, until they don't fit anymore, and then you fold that into hamburger menu. Um, and then down below that, you have this welcome to BBC. I would float uh, this left, uh, and then I'll float the other thing right um, across like the entire bar. Um, and then I would center them <laughs> somehow without Flexbox, uh, which I would need to think through how I would do that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pause there. I'll let anyone else chime in if that's if that if they disagree with that. But um, I can then go. Oh yeah, obviously within um, within the header is the nav, and then uh, I would use the nav element for 
containing all of these buttons, um, including the more. And then, uh, yeah, so just thinking through like just the header and like the top part, and then we can think through the rest um, later. What do, you, what do you guys think? So let me, I want to stop you there and ask you a question. Like, I think a lot of people might ask this is how come you're going to use a percentage width instead of fixed width here? Yeah, because if you use fixed width and you fix it at exactly these widths, the second you narrow the viewport a little bit, everything's going to break out of uh, everything's going to break out of uh, like the viewport, and you'll have a horizontal scroll bar. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, if you have a horizontal scroll bar and you did that and you did not intend for there to be a horizontal scroll bar, you have messed something up with your with your layout. Mm -hmm. uh, so horizontal scroll bars are like ninety nine percent of the time they're bad. Um, so yeah, I. Yeah, that, like if you if you use fixed widths for this and you narrow the viewport, uh, like generally fixed widths are like pretty bad unless you like uh, know exactly what you're doing. But like almost everything should be percentage based or um, or flex. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh. <laughs> it's so hard, right? Like, like you're so used to using these yes. modern tools, and you're like wait, I gotta go all the way back and like no, I can't use that. Like how, how do I do that? It's awful. You want my take? Yeah. yeah please. Right. Nav element at the top, I guess, in a header. UL, LI for all of them. Um, they'll have links inside them. The last one will be an input type search. Um, we'll use a custom property to do the height. All the LI is a display inline block, and then they all have a set uniform padding, so you don't have to care about the width. That will keep them all on the uh, done. I have um, <laughs> I I've I've heard debate about whether to use UL and LI for these, um, um, and I don't know I where we land. Point where you we towards uh, this man is filled with resources. Oh man, I'm about to I'm about to learn oh something. Goodness. Point you towards this book. Mm -hmm. All oh. about semantic HTML and accessibility. Not that by, book coming by Hayden Pickering. It's brilliant. You can go on the site and you can see most of it for free, but you can get a physical book too. So, and it's all about like stuff like this. So for the for the more button, uh, you could probably do it with CSS alone, but it probably wouldn't be great because you'd probably want to do uh, JavaScript to do like an area um, when you click it. You'd probably want like an area pressed or something just to say that it's open. And that there's a dialogue. Uh, I don't know the exact, but it's in here. <laughs> um, I think it's already yeah. expanded to, to make it. Yeah, but um, also I saw. I agree on the the the, the uniform paddings too. Uh, that was definitely a miss. Um, I would say also. Oh, inclusive components. Um, and uh, there was a question about M's or REMs in the chat. Um, almost oh. always rems like, uh, M's pretty much, I think only use it for letter spacing. Um, and in very, very rare cases, padding around, uh, the elements, uh, like, but almost always, um, I would say use rems. Yeah. I, I'm a rem person. Um, I maybe, I don't know. I've, I've seen this battle before. I like setting my rems to one to 10 ratio, uh, 62.5%, right. At the HTML level. And then I'm, now my rams are one to ten. A lot of people say there's accessibility issue, accessibility issues there. I've tested it on multiple browsers and it still works. So unless if I'm wrong there, but I don't use M's because M's when you compound M's they grow. They they grow larger and larger. They like grow according to the parent. So that's why I don't use M's. Um, I do use rams. Uh, and I really enjoy it because then you can scale it right at at the root level or HTML level where you set your font size. If I increase the 62.5 to 80%, then all of the uh, assets and all of the elements that I use RAM on, it, they will increase as well. That works well with like tablet and mobile. Um, I hardly have to do that, but when I do have to, you know, it works really well. What about you, Jay? Um, I don't get caught up in that. <laughs> <laughs> Just go with what the designer says, like the, real, the realistic um, cases that, you know, the designer is going to pick a a scale and that's, that's what you're going to go with and realistically 
you'll probably set up some tokens or something and you'll follow the type scale that you're given and you'll go with that. So it's a good thing to know about, but do I ever have to really pick scales and things myself or worry about it? Probably not. Yeah. Um, pixels for sizing, rems for typography mainly, but yeah, like like in the chat, like the process for me would always be not even styling anything to start with, just laying it all out on the page and then just uh, incrementally doing it. And yeah, I'd put all the, I'd start by dropping all the tokens in and then seeing how I could like use them. Across the board. Um, Nice. I don't um, think most designers think in terms of rems or m's though. No, I think, like no. It, this is that that's more of like an implementation decision. Um, yeah. So, which yeah, I think like for the most part, yeah, like using rems for typography, pixels for size. I, I tend to use rems for everything, um, even even for for margins and paddings and stuff like that. But yeah. Yep. Same with me. I try to use it wherever I can because then, um, you know, it could scale according to the, you know, the parent itself. Um, but yeah, one thing that I did want to mention too about the heading here, like, uh, you, you know, both your approaches were uh, different, but very common. Um, and the one thing, you know, like header, nav, UL, LI, all this stuff. But one thing that I am going to try to code up here really soon here is these clickable elements, right? Um, I like to have them padded out all the way to the element edges itself because then the click areas are the entire box, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people that I've seen, not a lot of people, a lot of beginners, what they do is they just make the text, the, the, the uh, HRF, right? The, the linkable item. And then when you hover over the box itself, you can't click on it. Uh, to increase the user experience, you want the whole thing to be hoverable, clickable, because then the user doesn't have to like guess like wait what area is clickable what's not the increase in that allows them to know like oh like this is an area that i can interact with to go somewhere um the uh the rule of thumb on that if ever you're designing something and the designer isn't or there's sometimes weird things you have to do but it used to be 44 pixels um i don't know who decides that i think it was apple <laughs> and now it's 48 so People's thumbs got fatter, I guess. Oh, <laughs> so we've gone up four pixels. But yeah, I think it's like the, I can't remember what they term it as. Is it like the minimal, mi minimum clickable sort of size or something? App target, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mostly like a mobile guidance. Um, Cause like, yeah, if you're, if you're trying to tap something with a mouse, then um, it's, it's a lot easier than trying to use your thumb. Because then sometimes you'll get, that's one thing to be wary of. Sometimes that comes up, right? So you'll have an icon that's got to be 24 pixels, but it's inside like a transparent button. So you'll have to create like a a transparent button that's 48 pixel by 48 pixel and then like stick the little 24 inside. You have to do like the invisible click areas, which adheres to what Shashi was saying. Like you want a clickable area or a hotspot, I guess. Yeah, hotspot. Um, uh, so I'm just going to normalize this real quick and just plain CSS. Uh, I thought you'd have finished it by now. I you were going to do a blue Peter on us and just pull it out and say, here's one I did earlier. Okay. <laughs> I think you need a list style none too. Uh, in the UL, right? In the UL, yeah. Because the, the, oh, the could, bullets yeah. are off the screen. Right. I was like, wait, where is it? Okay. You like having people mi micromanage you while you're while you're writing code? Isn't this what yep. it's like to have a middle manager looking this over your shoulder? Exactly what it is. <laughs> you, don't, uh, you wouldn't need float. Oh, oh. Wait, you could what? do inline block, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. great. <laughs> that's the that's the actual challenge. Just try and use float for everything. I know. That's what I was like, wait, float, <laughs> float, float in hand. I'm like, oh, I forgot this is play in my block. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna knock this out. Declaration. Done. Okay, so now we have that. And then let's just um get this into the colors at um colors I'll just make it simple. And then uh, color is gonna be white. Okay. And then we are going to add a padding of, well, let's see here, about five and 10, right? 
So this is top and bottom. This is left and right. This is basically computed down to this. First okay. item is top. Second one is the right side. Uh, third one is the bottom. And the fourth one is the left side. You only need two, right? You can yeah. just do five yep. then? Yep. I was just uh, showcasing. like. Got it. it. Yep. Uh, so let's increase this a little bit so that we can kind of show you guys what I was talking about. Uh, and then I, I, don't, I don't have a, a background. Let's make this red so we can see what's happening. Boom, 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 Good. boom. But what happens is oftentimes, right, we don't pat it there. Oh, we pat it on the LI. Yeah, we'll have to move the background color to, the background. to make it look disguised. Yeah, so now it's disguised. And then when I hover over it, it doesn't do anything because it's on the text itself. And since you increase the user experience uh, and the applicable region, you want to add it to the, the A tag itself because now the whole thing is an action item. Just Boom. on a just on padding as well it's worth noting that although it's the support is slowly filtering in you could also go with like padding in line and padding block and then it will if we got into like writing modes and directionals yeah. it would swap out for you but it won't matter here because it's uniform <laughs> uniform all right so just want to do that quickly um all right so now let's talk about like the hero area, right? Uh, where Welcome to BBC is at. Like right now, we see one large feature item, and then we have four um, smaller feature items on the on the right side. I would say, you know, these are all featured items, but the left one is the most recent one, or the most like the one that they want to feature the most. Um, how are we going to tackle this? Yeah, so we would have to probably. I would put a position relative uh, container around like this text and the image um, and then probably position absolute uh, the text inside on top um, and I would let the image kind of like I assume that the image would be given to us in like the right aspect ratio but we probably want to like no that's that's probably not safe to assume I, I like I would actually <laughs> yeah I, I would say like um, yeah I would set the I would set the uh, the aspect ratio according to what uh, I want it to look like um, and then I would uh, absolutely position the text at the bottom of this container uh, and then uh, within the text element would have like the header and the description and like the location um, and the location would have like this little red border on the left. Other thoughts? No, like if yeah, if we're just doing these card pieces, then yeah. Um, this is where a really good um, use case for container query would come in because you see, mm -hmm. like the left one has the description, the right yep. ones don't, and because it's because they're smaller. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'd have to I guess do that with a class or something to get around that, um, or it'd be like in a different wrap or I don't know. But the yeah. Exactly what you said. I'd probably add like a, um, I'd put like a linear gradient over the, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just to like darken it up a bit. And a then, floor fade. Yeah. A floor fade. And then, yeah, like you said, the aspect ratio, I guess it just drop like a background size cover and hope that you're given the right assets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I was asked by someone. Uh, they were having troubles with this gradient, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I have a tool for that." So we're gonna code this up. Adam Argo um, did a really good tweet on doing that little fade. I'll try and find it. Um, that would be fantastic. The yeah. um, what do you guys think of reusing that same component uh, styles across all of the? Um... Oh, let me bring it back. Yeah. Also, there's a question about uh, what tag we would use for this, uh, whether it be article. I think yes. Um, yeah, I would use article for anything that um, could theoretically stand alone on another page. Um, so I think this would be a good use case for article. Yeah, I use articles when they're like components, right? They're reused all over the place. Um, articles are kind of meant in that fashion. Um, 
and then like obviously outside of it, it's a uh, it's a section that wraps all the articles together. I'm gonna start yeah. just advocating for this book massively, but <laughs> this book actually covers <laughs> how to do cards and stuff exactly. Um, yeah. Did Honestly, you secretly ghostwrite this book? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It looks yeah. really good. <laughs> he, he probably has some uh, his names in there. I bet you anything. Like, most projects, honestly, most projects I start or features I start, if I've got to build something, I grab this one and I grab um, there's one called form design patterns. And I always grab these two to start with just to like double check I'm thinking the right thing. Because you know what thing's going to come up in a minute, don't you? like the clickable area of the card yeah. or whatever. But I think it'll be okay on this one because we don't have like the little Seymour or something. But you you bring up a great point, Jay. Uh, a lot of beginners, when I talk to them, they're like, hey, I want to be like you. I want to code perfectly where I don't have to ever look up anything ever again. And what did you just say? You bring that book every time you build it, you <laughs> look through it, cool. right? <laughs> yeah, like like that's, yeah. that's the beauty of things. Is that you, you're not going to, get that like you might memorize a lot of things but there are things that you're like oh i forgot how this works or i don't know i don't remember like flex box align what does that do again like, like there's just things that we know very well and there's some other things that it's just like no it's like we're gonna look it up we're gonna google it we're gonna use our books we're gonna use the resources to um you know build the things that we're used to building even though we've done it so many times you still check you still check. Are... Every time I do card designs, I have to go and read because I'm like, oh, which way do you do it? Do you wrap the whole <laughs> thing in a link or do you? And then it's like every design is different, right? So, yeah, it's absolutely are... like, it's it's paid for itself, so <laughs> it's fine. There are 115 HTML tags. Uh, no one knows them all, like by heart. <laughs> Um, so, and like many of them are deprecated, but still, I think there's probably like 70 or so useful HTML tags that no one knows by heart. So it's totally fine to look them up. Yeah. If you go explore, like, I don't know if you have this, but when you just go exploring like MDN and just like some of the APIs and things that you just completely forget that exist. And it's like, what? You can do that. <laughs> Shashi, people... do you, Shashi, do you, do you not use Emmet? I don't. Oh man, <laughs> Jay, do you do you use Emmet? I use um, I use Pug. If I was doing this, I'd be using. Okay, Pug. got it. So all right, I, Here, I I'm let, cool, so. let me let me drop let me drop some knowledge on you, Shashi. Let, let's go. Let's go. When you're done, when you're done with this, go okay, go okay. go down, and I'll t I'll show you how to recreate this in Emmet. Okay, okay, okay. I know somebody was just uh, who was it? Uh, uh, Alvarez was just telling me, hey, just type in the name and just press tab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just uh, just go go down. I'll show you. I'll show you how to use this. Okay, okay, okay. This. All right, okay. Sex, let me section. Up. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Um, okay, so now, okay, where's my solution here? Da, 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 da. This was never about learning CSS. This is the lesson ever. This is the lesson you want if you want to save time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was actually um, thinking this earlier. Like, I wonder what you're going to do for the HTML because I, the only time I write HTML is like in React, really. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just gonna mock this up really fast. Oh, wait, 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 wait. oh look at that. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Save me time. I'm learning stuff, guys. I'm. I, I guess I'm like historic, or what do you call it? Prehistoric. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm just gonna write some stuff here. All right, and then we have our tag. It's a. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it no classes right now. Tag. Oh, what's the tag again? Uh, middle. Oops. Okay. Um, so, all right. I'm gonna go off uh, what Mike was saying. Okay. So what we're gonna do is um, we are gonna move the content on top of the image. Correct, Mike? Yes. Okay. So now you see how my HTML is set up. Because we, we know we have to remove all of these elements on top of the image, do you usually wrap this up in a div or something so that they're contained? Yes. And then you can move it up. Okay. I, I would position that at the bottom of the that element. Um, and then within, and then article would be position relative. Um, Jay also brought up an interesting idea where maybe we use a background image for the, for the actual image. 
I'm actually curious, uh, Shashi, if you have an opinion. I, I have my own opinion whether or not we should do that, but I'm curious, like, what either of you think. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have used the. You could do that. That is a good point, actually. Um, yeah, you're right. I should use object fit, not mm -hmm. background size. I blurted out the wrong one. But yeah, I would use a. I'd use an overlay of a linear gradient on top of an image. That would be yep. better because then it's more accessible, right? And you can just yep. add an alt. But then it depends because it's it's a decorative thing. I guess in a sense in this case. Yeah. It's, I think it's I think it's useful to have the alt text, right? Yeah, um, maybe for, for the image. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. There you go. That's very useful. People, that's really good. That's really good alt text. That, people that, are gonna get a good sense so of what's now going it's on. Now it's not a decor decorative image, you know. So you know, for me it, it really depends on the asset itself, right? If it's if it makes sense and also like responsiveness, like how is it going to look like here and there? Um, like, is should it be an image or should it be a background? Because, if, yeah, you know, if if it is actually an image and you put a good description to it, it is going to help with a little bit of SEO. And if it's not, if it's just a decorative element, then I would definitely move it to a background because then it saves yourself um, a DOM element. And at the same time, like how we're going to position this, it makes it so much easier to not have a wrapper, right? Because now I have to have this wrapper to wrap it up and push it on top of the image itself. For the, um, I just went and had a look at BBC just to see what they were doing. That's another thing people should do. Just go and check yes. out stuff and just see what they're up to. But yeah, um, yeah, normally alt text, right? It's like, yeah. if it's useful. And I'm, I'm always like, is it useful here? Is it not? Because sometimes in an article, right? It will just be like the title tells you what you're doing. So you don't need to like, if the, the title is dogs and then the picture's a dog. Like what really is it bringing to the table? But <laughs> um, yeah, they use them. So it makes complete sense. I don't know what you'd have for alt text there, but the current one I'm looking at, it just says like, it's a picture of a police car and it's like police car surrounded for the alt text. So yeah. Right. Don't dig into people's code. <laughs> That's the takeaway. <laughs> Here's something that I've been seeing a lot. Um, I I kind of debug a little differently. I've seen Mike hold live, and I don't know if this is the preference, Mike. But when you're writing your CSS or or you, you know you're trying to manipulate the DOM, do you write it in your code editor and then you wait for it to live reload? Uh, no. When I save it, reloads. Yeah. So when you save it, like so, you like to put it. Um, inside your IDE, right? And then you save yep. it, then it reloads. And... Well, uh, so it depends on, so if I'm debugging, if I'm like, oh, something's wrong, I will do it in the, I will do it in the, uh, the dev tools. Like I, like there's no faster way in my opinion than like checking and unchecking these things and like adding new classes and stuff like that. And then I'll transfer that stuff into my IDE uh, once, yes. once I'm like happy with it. But I need that base to be there first. I don't, I don't typically start over in, in CSS, in the DevTools CSS, and and do it there. Um, so I'm curious. I'm curious at how other people's workflows are. Like even even seniors don't know other seniors' workflows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jay, I'm curious uh, on how you go about this. Um, yeah, like I I do the same thing there. I would just um, I tend to smash everything. I have editor here, browser here, save see it save see it and just go like that and then if i do start tinkering in the dev tools um dev tools has like that where you can just copy it out format it and paste it straight yeah. in like a block um yeah tend to do that this bugs really good if you want to get into like this bugs messing around with stuff um but only bringing that out like that's the big gun if i really need <laughs> so this is the, this is great because you two do it that way and i do it in the browser interesting interesting right because i like to come here right so if you look up here <clears throat> in the element that's all inline styles and if you look down here this is the class name itself right and because i haven't called out these class names yet they're they're not available um but that's okay because what i'll do is just by feature by feature right because i know i want this position relative and then we're gonna we're gonna want this image to be uh position absolute um and then I think I could do like the index minus one, and now that brings it out, right? So now I'm playing around with this without even putting in the code, because then I can be, I can kind of test that out. I can kind of feel like, okay, what what's gonna work? Is this gonna work? Is that gonna work? Um, let's kind of test this out. 
Um, so I like to kind of come in here and test things out, but I don't, if I have a class here, I don't put it in here, right? Uh, I won't put it, I won't put any of my classes that I'm trying to modify in here because if I do that, I will not remember what I did. And it's gonna be very hard to go back and add those classes, uh, those properties to my style. So what I'll do is I'll put it in the element.style, which is inline. Then I know that everything I put in there are the, you know, the, the modified uh, properties. And I, if they work the way I want, then I'll copy it over and, and throw the, it in the whole editor. The only drawback with that is that you're ignoring the cascade. And it might, yeah. it might catch you out later down the line. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. One note I was going to say as well, just because you can see all those um, custom props on the side there. Um, one thing I would always do, and we kind of mentioned it earlier about the design token stuff, but um, I would look for those. I would load them up first. So like, you know, we put the padding and stuff on the LIs. I would have done like a root or something and put all those in and then use them as variables. Because then yeah. you're just able to swap them out whenever you want um, at the top in like one place. Mm -hmm. That's a great point, Jay. Don't worry too much about that if you're just learning CSS. <laughs> but that, yeah, Jay, that is a really good point. Like you don't want to be setting like individual margins throughout your code. You want to like tokenize it all and put it at the top um, so that you have a very consistent design that's very easy like you don't want to have to like if it's like five pixels across for like all these different paddings you don't want to have to like go and like do a find and replace on five pixels it's going to be a huge mess so change them all to uh, six we, like yeah, exactly. bed, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right um, I, I, sorry i saw some questions in the chat um in terms of uh, mm -hmm. uh like why are you using a div instead of a span for um for middle east um uh, in the 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 location. Uh, oh, why am I using it there? Yeah, no, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, for this because we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, normally div versus span is like um, there's no semantic meaning to either of them, but yeah. one is inline and the other one's block, but it doesn't matter for for our purposes. Is there not yeah. a location tag? I don't think so. Location? I don't think so. I like, think the closest we'd want is like small. Um, cause it's kind of like a footnote. Um, if I'm looking at the, the BBC, um, actual design, but I can't think of any <laughs> other one. They're yeah. just using spans inside links. Spans inside spans, inside spans, inside spans. I've seen oh, that. If, if you want to see a good domception, just, and this is for anyone out there, just, uh, hit inspect sometime on Twitter and just go digging. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> It's I so I wrote the I wrote a Chrome extension for Twitter and it's like uh, to change Twitter appearance and I had to write like mutation observers and everything. Oh bit. my goodness! <laughs> you want to see it? Now? Okay, let's go. It's insane. It, Twitter <laughs> Twitter is not a good experience for visually yeah, impaired people. In my all opinion. my stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. just like inspect like a tweet or something and then just look at the DOM and it's like wow. And there's just like the odd React test ID, and that's like all you can go off. <laughs> it's insane. All right, let's look at. Oh, this I gotta say, I'm really impressed with you sharing your Twitter screen, Shashi. Oh, that's really bold I, on the live stream. I'm I'm like wide open. <laughs> it's like there's nothing for me to hide. Actually, I hid everything before I came on here. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jake. Uh, all right, I'm inspecting. That's insane. Oh my goodness, look yeah. at this. Look at this. Spot the semantics. Oh, there's an article. Oh, there's an article there, yeah. 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 <laughs> the top, yes. top of the tweet. Top of the tweet. One, but there's no section. There's oh, there is. The whole thing's a section. Yeah, but yeah, there's just so many divs everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a pretty common oh. thing for like any front end framework is like people just like use divs like they're free. No. Uh, like they don't they don't cause some kind of performance issue on oh, browsers yeah. if you have like billions and billions of them <laughs> just bashing twitter no problem because we're on youtube so we're okay right yeah everyone dm <laughs> everyone dm shashi oh my goodness yeah right now. there's notifications i only have three right now you guys can dm the show um but then yeah on the right side here right look at all these inline styles that's it's probably because of the framework itself um but that's being injected in there instead of being classes and then uh so it's not it's probably just housed into, into the component alone. But like a div inside div. And then we have an article, an aria labeled by what? 
Oh my goodness. Wait, uh, that's a selector? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. It's insane. Wow. <laughs> How did you even navigate yeah. this, Jay? Like, oh my goodness. With a lot of frustration. <laughs> and then okay, okay, hold on. I'm not I haven't even got to the content yet. Okay. I've gone uh how many levels here? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm at the content. Seven levels deep. And I finally got the content, but and then we go here, and that's the image. Holy smokies. Okay. You can write a quick Dom script to, to count how many layers deep we are, too. <laughs> and they'll right. release a film about it. <laughs> With Leonardo DiCaprio. All right. So <laughs> going back here, um, what is your take? Like, how are you going to push this content to the bottom? Well, you cannot use Flexbox, you cannot use Grid, you can use other yeah. techniques. I would just position absolute that entire like text element, like the news article content, um, and then do bottom like five pixels, left five pixels. Okay. Oh, this microphone's in my way. The the only downside of doing this is if like the text ever becomes big enough to break outside of the content. Okay. Um, but hopefully that won't ever happen. Uh, and then news article. Wait, what's going on here? Why didn't it take the article's position relative, position absolute? Where is it? It's at it, it went up to the top on top. Why, 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 why? I have no floats, right? Okay, no floats, no, no other wearable floats. It might be this guy. No, it can't be this guy. What is it on top? This is great for us to struggle like this, right? Like yeah, why doesn't the bottom work? work? It's real. Because that's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> bottom zero. It should have went to the bottom. But it's at the top. It's on top of the image. Yeah, look at look oh, at our faces. Oh, 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 I know why. Because we have two elements that are position absolute. Oh, yeah, now, yeah. Now, article has a height of zero. And so it doesn't know what yeah. to do. Because it's the like, image, uh... the image doesn't need to be position absolute. Yes, you're right. There we go. <laughs> but no, but notice our faces a second ago. That is <laughs> that is the life of a developer. Doesn't this so like... just, yeah. So okay, if okay, if your okay. face is like this when you're doing when yeah. you're doing CSS, it, that's normal. I've been trying to look for this tweet for ages. That's my. Problem. <laughs> I've been trying to look for this linear gradient thing. Oh, okay. I I have a little trick for that. Um, we're gonna keep this in here for now. If you can find it, Jay, that'd be great. Yeah, there was a, Adam did a really good one where he made like a. It was just. I think perfect. as a placeholder, we can just do like a linear gradient from yeah. like. RGBA zero 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 like point eight to point like two. Yeah, I I've, I've got something queued up here. Let me get this guy in here, and then uh, we can look at this. It's not gonna be pretty, but okay. We got tax on top. Okay, now we just let's the, the image gradient. Um, I this is my go to ESS gradient generator. Have you guys used this tool before? Yeah. Have you seen Josh's one? No. Oh, that's good. Oh boy. It's not really for these kind of it's for like really nice looking. Oh yeah. 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 That av oh, it, it avoids yeah. like the ugly gray area. Yeah. Mm. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. So this tool here, right? What we had was I'll oh, bring it back. It's a lower fade, right? A little fade up. So this is kind of what it's mimicking right now. How I got that was um, I have two gradients here. Uh, they're both black. And this one on the right is 100%. It stops at 100, but I can also de like increase and decrease the opacity. And so this first one over here is set at a 50% opacity. So I can easily like drop it down. So now it's you know, zero, zero. But if I'm over here, let's say 50, 50, right? And so now when we come down here, you can see this is the computed 
code that will allow us to do that. Um, something really cool that um, I don't do anymore is like you can look at the IE uh, extension here where mm -hmm. it shows you the prefixes of like this is how we used to have the code manually okay. copying like this, you know, <laughs> prefixes with WebKit, Mozilla, and then this filter thing is crazy. I do, I can, I, I always generate this because there's no way I'm going to remember this. But yeah. the great thing about today is we have auto prefixer and post CSS that can do that all for us without us even thinking about it. And you don't even need those prefixes most of the time. So, yeah. Yeah, not anymore. Not in the modern, modern browsers. Like it's really not needed anymore. Okay. So now this top one is actually the fallback. If the gradient doesn't load or the browser doesn't uh, handle it, it will just be pure black, which it's not great, but it works. Yeah, that's one quote unquote nice thing about CSS is if uh, the browser doesn't understand CSS, the CSS, it'll just like pretend like it's not there. Um, so that's what you're seeing with that fallback. All right. So what is your what is your way? How are we how are we gonna put this in? How are we going to put the gradient in? I would set the, I would set this as a, uh, an after. Yes, I agree. Oh, I have my, um, right next to me. So it's not friendly. It's now I have that. It's wait. Oh, it's the after. Okay. Now I can cheat and do this. Uh oh, I'm using um, fly cut to paste all this in, and it's not showing up because there is no height and no width right now. So if I do a height of 100% width, and then I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to. Um, uh, put a display position it in as well uh, because I have to put on top of this, but below that. So this one, let's do a Z index of 10, just put a 10 on top. And then this one is going to position itself at one. Uh, background. Height. What's going on here, guys? It's, um, it's like a nose. Very distracting. Oh, I think um, try top. I don't know if top zero, left zero, bottom zero, right zero works here, but um, I think I know what's going on with width and height. But let's. Uh, you got to do top left, top left, bottom right, all zero. Top left, bottom, right. That didn't do anything. Sorry, I was out of the room. Um, okay, so we have this after. Yeah, the content set to nothing. The background set up. Height 100%, width 100%, position Z index one because this article is Z index 10, so it's going to be fit on the one level of the the Z, and this is going to be on the 10. And then one uh, uh, one trick as well for the uh, just. While I see it, you see you're writing top right bottom zero. You can just use an inset zero. Um, is that supported these days? <laughs> I'm not sure how much, but a post CSS thing would get around it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep things all, all out there. Uh, okay, I think I know what's going on though. I think um, I don't even think images are allowed to have after pseudo elements. Uh, yeah. And that was what I was say. Oh my video. goodness, you are absolutely right. It's the same with like inputs and stuff. So, oh my goodness, but it's interesting that dev tools, um, yeah, it still rendered okay. something, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, we probably just need an overlay, um, that sits on top between the image and the um, and the uh, and the content. Also, I don't think that Z index on the after uh, element would have done anything. Um, cause I think it's in a different stack and context than the, uh, than the article, but, uh, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of stack and context. 
um, but <laughs> but I do think that uh, there are different contexts. Yeah, this is where like I always like am confused. Like when when you're using some particular elements and they don't have pseudo elements, and you're like, wait, why is it rendering? Like, how, how come this is not working? Boom. I believe I can just do well. Let's just do without the inset. Um, bottom zero should work, and I don't think. Oh, we're doing it that, huh? Okay. Yeah. I don't. Uh, we do need the laugh. Okay, so that one there. It if is. you if you do write zero, then you don't need the height and width either. I don't think. Right zero. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're just yeah. putting it right in the middle, right? Uh, you're stretching it a across the entire element, and I don't think you need width and height. Uh, anymore. Let's see what we got here. Oh, awesome! I didn't know that, Mike. I learned something. Mm -hmm. I always set it 100 and just do it bottom and left, and then it just pushes itself. There we go. Looks pretty good. Looks well. It's a little bit off here. The whole th oh, oh, there we go. It's it's on the whole thing instead of the image now. Um, so it's overlaying, right? The, uh, yes. the article, like the, the whole thing here. Um, but, but the article should only be as big as a, the image anyway. So. I, I... That's why we need object fit, right? Oh. Yes. Dynamically, how do I do this? Just with an image, I think, just object because, fit oh, because, oh, I, I see, I see. Because... On the image. You, yeah, you want to stretch the image. Okay. Contain, right? Or cover? Uh, I can never yeah. remember which one is better. <laughs> it, just needs, um, it needs a whip 100% on it. I think. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And then it's still pushing down a little bit. No, that looks good because then we want to then the container of that news article should set the width to like fifty percent of the the total column. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. We could just use uh, could you use column count to get that layout as well? I don't think they're allowed to use column count. I don't if think they're they're close. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we we gotta go like fifteen years back or so. <laughs> we can't do that. Oh man, this is amazing. Okay, um, I kind of knew that you know we we're gonna have a good conversations and we we're probably weren't gonna build everything, but um, I did want to show some tools that could also help uh, build uh, websites, right? Bbc.com. Uh, uh, okay. So the first one that I wanted to oh was that right? bbc.com, right? B BBC, not BCC. Oh. <laughs> BCC. Oh, I'm right now going to a not so good site there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first uh, plugin I have, I don't know if you guys uh, use this daily, is Web Developer. Let's see. We Chrome plugin tool to really help you uh, with some tools. Uh, so the first, like, right, right away, like, if you open it up, you can disable, like, all JavaScript if you want to debug. Uh, something that I really like to do when I build a site is disable all styles. This way I can be like, hey, you know, for accessibility purposes, let's see what they're going to see, right? Because if I tab, well, let me see, start from the top. If I tab through this, you can kind of see what it's going to go through without even going through the design. You have no styles here, and it's really nice to just kind of go through the site and see what it's built, well, how it's built, um, what, what, what assets are there, um, all this, you know, like plain... 1990s website, right? <laughs> like nothing. There's no styles. It's just nice just to kind of see the uh, the framing of the site itself. Uh, and so this is something that uh, I really enjoy doing. As as Jay said earlier too, um, this is ideally how you should start building your site. Is like you you should ideally have some version of this when you've built your site out. Uh, before you've even applied a single style. It's really helpful to kind of like set the skeleton before you start working on the styling um, mm -hmm. and, and making sure you have like your site has like good bones. 
I used to use that extension. I don't think I use it anymore. Um, it is good though. I yeah. <laughs> I think I mainly used to use it because I used to like switching off um, not so much styles, but like scripting stuff. And now I just use the command palette and dev tools all the time. Yeah, I, I don't use this. So good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't use this as often either, but I, I have it, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do this. This would be cool. Yeah. And then one thing that I really like about this is uh, right here, responsive layouts. If you have to build responsive layouts, so click on this guy, and it's going to show you all these different layouts, right? Now I have a mobile. I have a 480 by 320. I have a small tablet, and it's all rendering inside. So it's not native, but it gives you a good picture of like what, you know, how this website looks like. And you can kind of debug this a lot easier. Um, it's 800 by 600, you know, so it's pretty cool. This is one thing I really like about it. This is awesome. I've never used this before. I've never used this particular functionality. It, um, reminds me of, is it responsively.app? Responsively.app. Uh, yeah, there's like a little, um, it's an app where you can do this and you can pick all the different, and it, it lays them all out and you can change things. Um, it's pretty cool responsibly app i think uh is it polypane as well does this kind of thing as a browser oh there yep. you go. Look at that. This, yep. this one's cool oh very cool the, like the, like these sites might probably have uh, uh better engines too to be more accurate because i know that this plugin uh this web developer plugin like this responsiveness it, it, it has not displayed some media queries that i had before like it, it does a great job though like kind of displaying what's going on so this app probably does a, an even better job but look at that you can go horizontal makes it easier i like the, really cool. the mirror interaction thing is like unbelievable so like oh right here wow. yeah uh, holy smokes that is pretty cool. Oh, yep, it does it to all the screens. Oh, awesome! There's just so many tools. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't. You guys, you guys actually know a lot more tools than I do. All right, <laughs> and then the last, the last tool I wanted to show off was this one here called Pixel Parallel. Um, this is what I usually lay my designs on top of to kind of get pixel perfect. But there's this really cool tool. Uh, grid and U rulers. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna scale this down because it's gonna make it a lot. This is reminding me of. Uh, do you remember when, like 960 grid was like such uh -huh. a popular thing, and there was a bookmark, yep. and it just just put the lines and the gutters over everything. <laughs> yeah. That's how I learned, man. Like that's how I learned to be. Uh, somebody called me a grid Nazi before because I was so particular with the grid. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true because watch <clears throat> this grid is set up um I, oh my god like oh they set up okay so the reason why it's not to the edge is because it's usually like padding or margin on the sides right on your grid so if you can see here in a 12 column grid design and development it fits right into the grid um like this feature image right here is one two three four five six columns out of 12 and so that's one half and so the other ones are a fourth and a fourth, right? It fits right into this grid. And the reason why I feel like this is very important is uh, because aesthetically, it's, you know, uniform. Like, it, it makes sense. There's nothing kind of outside of the bounds. It doesn't really throw you off. Um, like, as, as I scroll, keep scrolling down here, right, you'll see, like, majority of the design is fit in here. This column here fits in. The images fit in. Um, this one doesn't. And it might be because... You know, oh yeah, it doesn't really fit in. Huh. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it, it, it's a three-column layout within yes. within the yep. within the like I don't know one two three four five six seven eight within eight columns. Yeah. It's three columns split into eight, yep. so it's still so, within kind of the grid layout. Yeah. So the so what I found too is that it's the seven within eight, but then when you put it in the seven, that container becomes a new twelve, right? Because uh, it's like you use Bootstrap. Bootstrap columns. As you as you nest a container within the container, then that container, which now is a seven out of the parent twelve, that has its own twelve inside. So these are a third of a third, which is uh, four by twelve, four by twelve, four by twelve. 
And so that's how kind of works. And so uh, as you see here, like everything kind of just falls into this grid because it's it just makes sense. It just like it's more pleasing to the eye than when everything is pretty balanced. Uh, there's also like a lot of like articles about, oh, does should we design using a grid? Um, those articles are not for people like us. Uh, for like people who are like part-time developers who are like just trying to uh, just like get something organized. If you're like a full-time designer that's like pushing the boundaries of design and stuff, like maybe you don't need a grid. But if you're just a developer, use a grid. <laughs> um, yeah, they, who, who, if you're a developer who like dabbles in design, definitely use a grid. Like your your designs will look a lot better. Oh, yeah. 100%. I don't think Jay needs a grid, though. <laughs> I just see it all in grids. <laughs> yeah, Shashi, maybe this is a, you know, I think we're, I, I don't know how much time you're planning on staying on, but I would say that um, one other thing that's really important that may not be as obvious to everyone is like, learn the dev tools really, really, really well. Like know how to hide elements, know how to like hack these styles and stuff like that, how to inspect, get extremely comfortable with them. Um, it will save you so much time to like be able to mess around with it. And like, like Shashi, Shashi's doing uh, just like seeing that real time feedback, uh, like side by side, you know, like unchecking these styles and stuff like that, seeing what happens. Like this checkboxing is like one of the most brilliant things ever. Just like being able to like see what happens when you remove a style and add it back, uh, seeing the difference between those two things. You'll learn so much by understanding uh -huh. how to use this tool well. Um, I think Shashi plays it really dangerous, where like like you you do a lot of work in <laughs> you do a lot of work, and I'm like if, if Shashi just hits reload by accident, it's all God. Yep. So that, I I actually have um, I've done it before, but then I trained myself not to press reload at all, and that's how it, it kind of works for me because for, for for myself like that that alone is very efficient for me, where I just go in, play around real quick, and it's like go through the whole thing. And then I go back and I'll, I'll take the styles because um, for me, it's very tedious to go back and forth, back and forth, you know, trying to go through <laughs> something uh, because like, let's say, I'll just give you as an example. Let's say. He's just like proper living on the edge. Like he's weeks, <laughs> yep. weeks into a feature and he still hasn't put any code in the ID. <laughs> and no like code. the RAM is just going into right. his Chrome and then the tab dies and he loses the whole sprint. Yep. yep, yep. <laughs> I live on the edge. Um, cause like, let's say right over here, I want to, uh, use uh, grid and then I want to come here and do this grid template columns. Everything's in here for me to kind of play around with, uh, one FR, one FR, one FR. One um, thing that people often overlook as well is like the little tools, the little sub tools of the tools. So, you know, like display grid there, you can click the little icon -y thing. Yep. And then you get like, yep, it tells you exactly what's available. And then I can click on it and boom, this is what happens. Yeah. Bam. Yep. Like, that's super useful. That's... But often and you can, <laughs> when you hover the element, so you can see the grid, uh, which is incredible. Like, and they, they added all these things like silently. I don't remember ever mm. reading like announcements about them. Wait, but, like, wait. If I hover over the element? Like, yeah, if you hover over, yeah, right there, yeah. you can see oh, yeah. you can see yeah. how it's like divided up into the yeah. grid. You can see yeah. like exactly how it's outlined. So yeah. it's just amazing. Like we didn't have any of this crap. Oh my god! <laughs> we when we were starting out, it was just it's like so you had just you guys. <laughs> yeah, this is we're like just holding up a piece of paper and rulers to the screen and hoping. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel so bad. Like like when I heard that uh, Hunter Devs was just doing floats, I was like, oh, it was so bad. But I understand. I understand why, but just be appreciative of the tools you have nowadays because back then it was not this easy. No. Oh, hey, we didn't use a single float in our design today, by the way. Oh, <laughs> we, should my. Probably, we should probably. I tried, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you guys corrected me, so which is great. Because, yeah, it's, instead of a float, you can just see display inline block or inline, depending on what you need it for. Um, and then it kind of works itself out. Um, oh, I don't want to showcase myself. <laughs> yeah, someone said in chat on screen rulers. Yeah, yeah, 
Which Dev tools are better, Chrome or Firefox? They're both very, very good. Um, yeah. Like Firefox pioneered it with Firebug, uh, but then Chrome caught up pretty quickly. I think it actually is better in Chrome slightly, but uh, they're both like very, very high quality. I brought up Firebug the other day, just like nostalgically, but <laughs> obviously you still use it. You can still use it in like browser stack and stuff, but just that little icon, like, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just just the like like you guys are talking about like just the tools that you have available right in today, right? Um, like before, we had to do all this stuff by hand, or like like just watching us watching us go like struggle with some of these layouts. Like, wait, I forgot how to do this. Why isn't this working? And then it clicks, right? It's like, oh yeah, because the images can't use pseudo elements or oh, positioning. We forgot to set this and that. It's just like things like that. You know, we still struggle with too. Like it, it's it's going to be a struggle. But as you start building, as you start gaining that knowledge and as you start like when you fail and you learn, then you keep failing, you keep learning. And then those things are going to stack. That success is going to stack. And then you're going to start to just recall like what what you went through just to get to that solution. Yeah. So, right. Just don't be overwhelmed. Try not to get overwhelmed by it. Oh, That's the thing. I, I would say also like I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jay. No, 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 go for it, go for it. I would say like one thing that is really important too is like there are rules to what's happening on your screen, even if it looks random. Like I think that's one thing that like I really struggled with when I was first starting. I was like, why? Like I just added a pixel here and like all of a sudden like the layout's completely broken. <laughs> it's not like, so uh, this, is, this also happens in like Microsoft Word and Google Docs where like I just like try to align this text differently and all of a sudden like everything's broken. Um, the difference is in CSS, there is a reason why this is happening. And if you learn enough, you'll understand that reason. Um, but in Microsoft Word, that's impossible. Like you, it's just a black box. But with CSS, there are like rules to everything. And like if you if you learn enough, you'll understand what's going on. And so just remember that it's, it's not random. There is logic behind it. Uh, it's a matter of learning what that is. Yeah, you know, um, you know, Thank you too for coming on this stream. It's like a last second thing, um, but I, I just really wanted to do something to give back to the people that are learning, right? I kept seeing people on, in my feed. It was just filled with CSS. It's hard. I hate CSS. <laughs> it's very difficult. And yes, it is, but it takes time. Just like anything else, you know, it takes time. You Like what Mike was saying, like go and uh, look at a site and turn all these things off add some styles to it, kind of see how it works. Um, and like Jay was saying, you, know, you brought so many good resources for us to, to look into. Like that book, like I, I got it. It's coming my way. I, I really want to dig into it and read it more because um, web accessibility is becoming a huge thing. And if we don't stay on top of it, we are going to fall behind uh, because right now, you know, a lot of sites are getting sued just because they don't have the proper uh, web ex you know, accessible sites and for that's kind of our job too is to be on top of that to be able to uh, implement those these things because uh, sometimes you kind of have to be what forward thinking and, and do them ahead because when it comes back and you don't plan for it 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 is very difficult to go back and redo your code just to make things work for something that you could have planned for ahead of time yeah it's much harder to I can't think of what the word is, but like shoehorn it back in. Uh, retrofit. That's okay. it. Like retrofit things in when you could have like. So sometimes that is a thing. Um, this is going into like a real realm though. But sometimes that is a thing where the design dictate, dictates one way, and you're like, well, how does this work from an accessible point of view? And you have those discussions, but that's a whole nother, a whole nother live stream. <laughs> like. But yeah, that is a thing. And that's when like having a bit of an idea about semantic HTML and how people use things in like an accessible way is quite a good um, way to bounce back, I guess, with designers and stuff. Yeah, it's I, I would also say like in 90 percent of companies or like maybe 95 percent of companies or more you are going to be the expert on accessibility. It's yeah. kind of on you. Yep. Like your designer is probably not going to know as much as you you do about <laughs> accessibility. I, I've never met a designer that knows a lot about accessibility, to be quite honest. It's usually yeah, like a, a negotiation between you and the designer. Like they're always like, oh, get rid of that outline style. I'm like, no, people need that. Um, yeah, like when, when you're like keyboard 
navigating and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so it it is like we do have a responsibility as front end developers to to make sure. And, like it's not it's not just like a business use case. Like you don't try to avoid getting sued. It's also like the yeah. morally ethically right thing to do uh, is yeah. to make your design successful. Yep, I, I totally agree with that. Like it's becoming so big. And like what I was doing, right, turning off all the styles, and that's basically what like potentially what a, a person with some disabilities are going to go through they can't some some of them you know they're they can't see and some of them can't uh like they're colorblind some of them right so like you want to like be, be just uh forward thinking and just implement these things as much as you can um and there's tools like lighthouse and um, site improve that does a really good job to audit your site uh, to provide you like with like actual line items and like items that you should take to to become uh, what is it like right now? It's uh, WCAG 2.0, right? Uh, you have to be 2.0. Uh, you have to meet those standards. And then 2.1 is I heard it was coming. And it, it back. It went back because of the old administration, but the new one might be pushing it again. I don't know. I think we're on three. Very, what? I think we're going to three. We're, we're going, going to three. Yeah. Oh my word! Like I haven't <laughs> even gone to 2.1 and three. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so just understanding those and like looking um at uh, what what those standards are because some of them you're like what like i don't get it like why do i have to write a role for this why what's the aria tag for there's just so much more to learn and you're just grasping learning css now and all this stuff is coming ahead um but yeah any last words guys <laughs> um <laughs> that's such an ominous way to put it um <laughs> any last words before we take you out into the back garden um, <laughs> um no i think it's just a case of like what you iterated over is just don't get overwhelmed and you won't remember everything and you'll learn different ways to do things and you'll find ways that work for you that might not work for someone else and yeah, yeah there's no just enjoy it enjoy the ride that's the main thing. Yeah, I think I would echo the fact that like there's always something else to learn. Um, I have not done a great job keeping up with uh, a lot of the like <laughs> CSS has like you can write a SQL query in CSS now. Like this yeah. is yeah, absolutely I insane. Like yeah, I think <laughs> I, I saw it in Jay's feed actually uh, that you could do this. Um, I I have not kept up, and like I've barely kept up with like container queries. It's like the one thing I've learned uh, recently. Um, uh, but man, it's such a cool field because like there's so many things that we used to need JavaScript to do. Um, uh, yeah. like it, 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 like I'm not complaining about the amount there is to learn. Every single one of these things is coming out solves a problem, and um, it's yeah. exciting. It's really exciting. Like it it used to take forever, oh. take forever for like you hear an announcement. Like four years later, you can use it, right? Yeah. Uh, like that that time, mm -hmm. that gap is closing and it's just such an exciting time to kind of like be a front-end developer right now, in my opinion. You it's know, exactly, it echoes exactly what you were saying earlier as well. Like they just slip in these things out silently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like dev tool stuff. <laughs> Every time you go in there, it's like, oh, what is this little thing? There's something new, yeah. I, like, <laughs> yeah. There's some things that um, I forgot who was showing off, but I was like, wow, that's so cool. I didn't know it was there. And like what Mike was saying too, when um css grid was coming out i was like ah, oh, i isn't gonna have them for another three years because flexbox took forever to come out it happened so quickly yeah. and i was like wait 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 i wasn't planning to learn it but now i have to learn it yeah. <laughs> and it's just like things are just moving so much faster and it's great because all these new techniques and tools and like all these new features that are coming out they're so beneficial same thing with like css variables i was like oh pff. I'm going to continue to use SAS. I'm fine. Like it, no, it's like when you see the power of it, it is so helpful. It's tremendous. But yeah, so I just wanted to uh, end with like, what's next, right? Because there's a ton of questions in chat about how do I tackle a, a, a project? How do I do responsive development the right way? All this stuff. And I feel like we can't do this in one stream, right? Like it, it's going to take a, a couple of different ones, a couple of different topics. Like we were just talking about the simple design. We couldn't even get it done. <laughs> There's just so much to talk about. Um, so it's so much knowledge that, that we had that we can just um, go back and forth on uh, and just sharing all these resources. So, you know, I do want to continue to do these. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be weekly or, or whatever, but 
uh, Jay and Mike here. Always welcome to come back if you want. Um, you know, I, I know Jay wanted to do something like this as well. So, you know, all for it. You know, like the more people, uh, you know, are able to share their knowledge, it, everybody's going to be able to learn more because what you two like to do in CSS in your ID, I like to do in a browser. I'm <laughs> a little bit more risky, right? So you just kind of have to find like your style and like what you like to do because um, you're, that's what it's going to be. Like, we're not all going to fit into the same form factor. Everybody's a little bit different in different ways. We see things a lot similar, but there's many things that, you know, we have different tools and different things that we use as well. So the things, some of the things I had coming uh, that I was thinking about, like just taking a design, right, in Figma or Sketch and implementing it into code, like Pixel Perfect, like getting the ad, like, the colors and getting all the aspect ratios, like everything in particular, how to navigate through a file. I think that'd be cool. Um, how to use SAS, you know, what is SAS altogether and CSS variables. Uh, and then another really good one is just responsive development in depth. Like what's mobile first development? Like I, you know, you, you we keep hearing these um, uh, words and things getting thrown out, but what are they actually? Like all these things, like they, we can go on and on talk about this for days, but you know, like, um, you know, it definitely just want to space it out and have proper topics to talk about because there's so much to talk about with CSS. It's um, it's fine. We got fired based on the first hour and a half because we didn't really get much done. So <laughs> for sure, yeah, if, if I produce this at my job, uh, they're like, "Hey, can you can you put this together?" And then like an hour and a half later, I come back with a nav and like one image. I'm d I'm done. <laughs> Oh, it worked, guys. <laughs> Past, yes. <laughs> um, but again, I just want to thank Mike and Jay for coming on so last minute. Um, thank you for everybody that uh, came on as well and asked some questions. I know this is uh, my first stream, so I didn't keep track of any of the questions or anything. I just focused on work, talking to you guys, just a casual, casual conversation. Um, next time, you know, I'll do better at that. But um, again, oh, forgot. We have to do a drawing. Da, 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 da. Why don't you guys uh, talk it out while I pull this up? I just uh, say like it. Sorry, sorry go for it, Mike. No, go you, for it. You, you go ahead. I was going to say something dumb. <laughs> no, that's cool. I'm all for dumb. <laughs> oh, I was just, I, I was literally going to just fill the time with like, what'd you eat for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure your thing was going to be more insightful than that. <laughs> Maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just gonna say uh, the the one like the good thing here is um, like process is always important and understanding like those pain points, I guess. And that is one thing. Like sometimes it's not even it's not even the writing of the code. You can understand all the properties, but it's the decisions. Like, oh, how sh how should I do this? Like, we could do it this way. We could do it that way. And you'll actually spend a lot more time doing that. And um, the further you go, actually, the, the I don't know, like you can spend time where you actually work out a lot more and you're more productive when you're not typing because you understand problems and you think about it differently and you sort of, you solve it away from keyboard. So, yeah, just a little. Yeah. But yeah, what are you having for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> no, what, well, I was I was also going to say, like, I think Jay, like when the first, the first thing I, out of my mouth was, uh, in, in terms of like how I break down that layout, I realized that I had never actually done that before. I had never described my approach before oh. in terms of like, I've, I've, always, I've always done it for um, for JavaScript problems. Yeah, I've, you do it all I've, I've never, Fridays. Yeah, I, I do it every Friday, but I've, I had never done it for a design. And so Jay was able to articulate it so much better than me. It's like, um, just the, like exactly how you would pad out each element and things like that. Um, cause I, yeah, like I just never had to do that before. Uh, but it's such, it's such a helpful process, uh, to communicate that to someone else. Cause you'll know better, like how you, you're going to do it. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was so helpful to, to watch Jay do that. Yeah. It was really interesting. Like it's, it's just different perspectives and things, isn't it? That's, that's what's great. Um, and that's, what's great about web development in general. There's always multiple solutions to things usually like. We could have done everything in Canvas and just done pixels, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. or just or just screenshotted the whole thing and like pasted it in there with an image tag. Yeah, just the longest alt text ever. <laughs> Screenshot everything. 
All right. So here's the drawing. Um, this is the tweet. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, Front End Mentor. This is a uh, year yearly subscription to Front End Mentor. Um, why don't I just show it off real quick here? Front and Mentor. Uh, so on here, they have a ton of solutions that uh, you can take on, like all these challenges, right? There's certain levels from like, if you want to start off small, like newbie or junior uh, to intermediate. And as you can see, there's some solutions that are only for premium members, which is what this uh, subscription is going to do. But the cool thing is you can come on here and you can filter by like easiest, right? So you can start at the top if you want. You can start this QR code component. Uh, you can go work your way down. There's a newbie to junior, and then we have intermediate, and then we have advanced, which is number four, and then also we have number five, which is a guru. Uh, a lot of these are not just CSS and HTML. Some of these, like these layouts here, like this one here, it involves some JavaScript, and you can use whatever framework you want. Um, but like this website here, right, you can just add light JavaScript, but it's mostly just HTML CSS, just taking a design down and implementing it there. And like this one here has an API. So like there's a lot of cool solutions here where you can utilize and put them on your portfolio as well. Um, I have done a few of these, and they're really cool, and they're really good. The reason why I, I really like Frontend Mentor is because the designs are very modern. Um, they They challenge you. Uh, like, you know, a couple of these designs, right? They're just really good designs to to work off with. And you only get the sketch or Figma files if you're a, pr a pro member. And that's how you can be more like more particular and get all the um, sizing and, and, and the colors down properly. So a little bit about Front End Mentor. But here's the drawing itself. You had to follow Front End Mentor, okay? And then you had to retweet it. This is a retweet uh, picker. And so if I could do continue here, we have 52 entries. And so what I'm going to do is continue. And then we are going to draw. Here we go. Let's figure out who the lucky winner is. Drum roll. Or Jay's doing it. Uh, Precious. Precious is the lucky winner. Woo! -hoo! Congrats. Air horns. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> awesome. So, Precious, I would contact you, and then uh, we will get you going. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then we will get you your yearly subscription to Front End Mentor. Um, again, you know, thank you for every, for coming. Thank you to Mike and Jay. Uh, it was fun. We had some good conversations, and, you know, hopefully we can do it again. So, bye, everybody. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh.